I don't remember where I stopped on my last Never Have I Ever. So I'm gonna try to see which one I feel like I never answered. Never have I ever seen someone D.I.E. No. Never have I ever had a wardrobe malfunction. No. Never have I ever run for my life. I guess that one time that I shared with you guys, this wasn't physically running, but I did physically get myself out of that situation. It was two instances. That one clown who for some reason wanted to greet me and he attempted to yank open my car door as I sat inside my car and he like slid his hand through the door crack and I was like this is fine back off and that one time that I happened to be at a Walmart parking lot just taking a minute to put my things away and then this one guy out of nowhere crosses the street he came out of some red car and this particular walmart had some benches in the parking area and he sits on the bench that's closest to me and he's like all shaky and jittery staring across fixated on something he is wearing a jacket on like 90 degree weather and then i was like looking at him i crank on my engine I roll up my window and I start backing up and when I pretty much shifted my gear to reverse he got up and very quickly walked back to his car I'm pretty sure that he was trying to be a clown and do something so spiritually speaking I think that because my mom always has me in her prayers and always praying for my protection and my brother's protection maybe that evil thing of a person that jittering and shaking and indecisiveness that he had maybe that was that superior power superior being acting against him because if you're going to commit something bad then i think that your better chances are to move quick act quick but if you're pondering about it and thinking about it and all that you're letting doubt seep in and I like to look at doubt as something is inside of you at war with your intent. So I think that, say, the power of spirituality there was clashing against his bad intentions. And ultimately, he lost the battle. But I also did my part, which was I sensed the bullshit. I felt cold and my stomach was tight and i'm like uh-uh and it was like the bench was probably like maybe three times my arm length so it was pretty close and i'm like you stupid bastard out of all of the benches that are available and you just cross that street and you see that i'm there maybe consider giving me extra space you couldn't pick the one that's on the opposite end the one farthest to my window the one on the other side no you had to pick the one that's like right there like i have no choice but to like see you and i'm pretty sure that you did that because i was a female and i was by myself had i been with someone else i'm pretty sure your buffoon ass wouldn't have done that i took the time to explain it so that you guys can see how to me that was running for my life because i have no doubt in my mind that that fool was up to no good and when i think about it statistically they always say do not spend a lot of time in parking lots which is something that i need to get better with of course when you get in your car just leave you know don't just hang out there never have i ever been in a talent show I don't think I've been in a talent, talent, talent show as in, wow, I had a show of my own to put together and show you because I have a special skill or something. But I have been in a choir, for instance. Never have I ever gotten stitches. She. Never have I ever tried to make an ex jealous. No, I don't have time for that. My exes, once I was done with them, I never talked to them again. I only spoke to one 
who also ended up visiting me just because he just wanted to check on me and check on mom too because at the time we had trouble we were going through some challenges and he was genuinely supportive at the time and then another one boyfriend my mom actually had on her facebook and he just routinely sent her birthday messages and she would send him birthday messages stuff like that i forget how this happened but i think my mom gave him my number or he gave her his number and we chatted for a little bit after let's see how many years had it been it had been about six years since we had any kind of contact with each other and then it was something like hey how are you i hope you're doing okay he had some kind of security job i guess and i was like yeah i'm fine and i'm just taking it easy doing this and that and the other very basic and after that we never talked again <laughs> and i do that on purpose because first of all on my end i don't need to be stressing about people like that people who are no longer a part of my life and I also don't think that anybody who's present in my life currently deserves to know that I'm still keeping a potential flame lit, even though that's not the case. But I would rather just stop all contact because it's simply the best policy in a situation like that. Sorry, you're just no longer good for me, so just completely let them go. So I wouldn't ever try to make someone jealous, and you guys know me, it is hard to get my attention anyway, so why would I be thinking about them? And it also helps that they're not even in my same town or city, and they're not on my social media. Even if I wanted to do that, I don't have a medium to do that, and I'm not going to spend the time trying to find them to do that. They don't care. And I'm pretty sure that by now, they must be in their own relationships. I hope they are. Never have I ever driven a stick shift. I have sat in a vehicle that has a stick shift, but then I was looking at it and I'm like, I just do not understand it. So I've never personally driven one. I tried to get some tutoring from my brother, but I never tried to actually shift gears or anything. Like I sat there, looked at it, then I sat on the passenger seat and then my brother was once again explaining to me how it works and showing me, but I actually didn't get to practice it. So literally speaking, no, I've never driven it. And I wouldn't know how to if I had a vehicle like that. Never have I ever set something on fire while cooking. No. Never have I ever set a friend up on a date. No. Never have I ever started a hashtag. No. I guess you mean a hashtag trend, then no. But if you mean I have my own unique hashtag to where only I have posts underneath that hashtag, yeah, for sure. Never have I ever paid for adult content, no. Never have I ever been scuba diving, no. But I have been snorkeling. I don't think that's the same thing. Definitely not the same thing. I'm not a very good diver. Never have I ever hooked up with, no, someone of the same sex or gender. No, and I would never, the idea of it absolutely appalls me. Never have I ever done a drive-by of an ex or crush's house. No, but I can say that I have visited the area of an ex before. Like... You guys remember about two years ago when I drove back to my hometown and I was saying, oh yeah, I remember that my first boyfriend lived out here, blah, blah, blah. Well, they had moved out. That family had moved out from that house. The folks who I saw there were not them. And it's not like I really could see them that well. The house looked empty, but I did catch a glimpse on my way back i think it was of someone in the yard and i also remember mom telling me that about a couple years prior they had moved out anyway so i knew they weren't gonna be there i just passed by the area to see if it would bring back any memories which of course it did i knew it would but i 
couldn't imagine what kind of memories would resurface. Never have I ever danced in the rain. No. Never have I ever danced on a table. No. Never have I ever joined the Mile High Club. No. And I'm not even sure what that means. I'm tired of saying never have I ever. So I'm just going to read through whatever it is. Slept in my car. Yes. Been on TV. Yes. Had frostbite. No. Never have I ever had blistering sunburn. Not that I can recall as a kid. I know I have been sunburnt, but I don't remember being blistery from it. Never have I ever gotten sick on a date. No. Had food poisoning. Yes. Purposefully given someone bad advice. No. Heckled a live performance. No. Had surgery. Yes. Wisdom teeth. Hit a parked car. No. Thrown someone else a surprise party. No. Had a surprise party thrown for me. I guess you could say an attempted surprise party because I was a kid and it was my birthday party. And by attempted, I mean that I was able to guess that's what was happening. So I said, oh, are you throwing me a birthday party? So I guessed it. Therefore, it wasn't a surprise. So um, I guess you could say, yeah, but, but I wasn't surprised. <laughs> Adjusted myself in public. Yes. Gone commando. Not sure what that means, but I'm going to say no. Worn a wig or extensions. Yes. Dressed in drag. No. Been dumpster diving. No. Broken a bone. No. But possibly. That pinky toe situation I was telling you guys about. That back in 2012 I smashed onto the little leg under a couch. And to this day it looks kind of dark and it never acted the same. Like it never felt the same. Very possible that I fractured it. But I'm not sure that I actually broke it, broke it. I think I would have known if I would have broken it. Never have I ever returned something after I wore it. I have. And by wear, I mean that I tried it for a little bit. And I tried to see if it was practical. If it was fitting me. And stuff. Like uh, I wore it for... It was a little while, I want to say for up to an hour, something like that. And then I felt that it just wasn't feeling better. It wasn't getting better. It was one of those items that you tell yourself, maybe I need to wear it to break into it, but it never really happens. And in my situation, it's one of those things where my body being the way it is, like skinny hands, but then... Other parts of mine are wide, but then I have skinny feet, but then I have thin ankles, but then my calves are average or below average, but my thighs are really wide, something like that. I had to try this thing. It was like a one piece kind of clothing. And then I said, there is no way I can commit to this for the intended purpose, which would be for... A prolonged period of time it was an event that I was going to go to and I just could not imagine wearing something that wasn't really fitting me so what I did was I returned it but then I bought it a size bigger and then that worked out I was honest about it I said look to be fair I did wear this for about an hour so it's possible that my deodorant smell stuck to it or something but ultimately, I decided that I cannot commit to it. But I do wish to try the big one. And they were fine with it. So I think it just works when you're honest. And I don't have a record of being a chronic returner. Peed my pants as an adult. Not that I can recall. And the reason I had to think about it is because I remember that I did have like an overflow incident. But overflow does not equate to peeing yourself so no. slid into a stranger's dms i only did 
twice and it was because they were creators from YouTube anyway and I was just submitting video topic ideas for them. It's not like I was doing it to like try to be a stan or fish for a date or something, whatever people do. I just like to DM people because there's something that I want to tell them but I don't want to necessarily be public about it and I never interact with anyone over DMs except one of my friends and I highly doubt that those creators ever saw my messages anyway and I prefer to use DM over email because I feel like email is like a serious commitment and whatever I'm suggesting is not that serious so I would rather have something informal like DMs slid into an excess DMs no been in a helicopter. I have been in a helicopter, but I've never flown in a helicopter. Lost my shoes during a night out. No. Had surgery. I literally just told you. Flirted with a married person. No. Second guest in a relationship. Second guest a relationship. Of course, I think we all do at some point, but I think it's what you do with those thoughts that matters. Had braces, no, even though I needed them. Had a cavity. I was told years ago that I have a small cavity, but then I saw a different dentist and he said I didn't have one. And I'm surprised because uh, I feel like my teeth are not, what can I say, superficially, there are some hollow looking spots. So I would expect that at least like, the teeth that are farthest to the back would have problems, but I guess not. Hitchhiked? No. Picked up a hitchhiker? No. Changed a tire? Yes. Lied about my relationship status? No. Lied on a dating profile? No. Got in seasick? Yes, and this is surprising to me because when I was a kid, of course, I was born in a very naval town so getting on ships boats vessels was something super normal for me but after being away for just like six seven years all of a sudden when i got on a vessel again my stomach felt like it was swirling and that was pretty shocking because i thought oh okay i'm a sea person so there's no way that anything about me is going to change but now i changed <laughs> So, yeah, it was strange. I always remember seeing people in vessels having their little throw-up bags, and I thought that was silly. But then, when I got up to walk to the bathroom, and I was, first of all, stumbling. And second of all, I saw that water in that bowl, toilet bowl going like that. I was like, what's making me sick is entertaining the seasickness more than just going with the flow. Had a broken heart <laughs> my entire adolescence. Broken someone else's heart. I'm pretty sure I did. And I feel pretty bad. Fallen in love. I mean, I'm honestly not sure what being in love is anymore. Like, I feel like my definition of it years ago would have been like an overly romantic one. So I think that being in love is like having a very strong, deep admiration but I don't think it's anything as romantic as what they depict or maybe it's because I haven't met someone who I can say wow in every aspect you're just my soulmate therefore feelings emotions heavily amplified that has never happened to me but just because I cannot say I have felt lackluster to an extent, it doesn't mean that I don't believe in the ability to be in love. I'm just saying that the crazy intensity that people describe, I can say that I've been excited about the idea of somebody, but I cannot say that I have actually indulged being involved with someone who I can say, this person is it, this person is the one, I'm absolutely insane and crazy about them. In the same manner that I cannot say that anyone has ever been with me and I can say that I felt that they felt 
an achievement from having me. You know what I mean? Like, oh my God, this guy is so crazy about me that you can tell in the way he serves me. Like the intensity, the eagerness, the investment, that passion. I haven't felt it for anybody and I have not received it from anybody, if that makes sense. Fallen in love at first sight, no. Sneezed on a stranger, no. Thrown up in public, not that I can recall. Wished I had kids, hell no. Wished I didn't have kids, yes. But uh, I don't have kids still, but even without the kids, I'm still wishing I don't have kids. <laughs> Seen something creepy while using public transportation, no. And I'm gonna stop right here because it's been like 26 minutes already, but yeah, not bad. I feel like we got moving this time around. Better topics. The next topics are entering into like the SEX territory, and I'm not sure that I'm going to indulge in any of those. So anyway, you guys let me know your answers if you want to.